Good morning, folks. Please stick around to the end today because we've got a little treat. The skeletal version of Amara's weekly weather report, including apparent space weather-induced dust and storm events, will play at the end of this video. It was made by Dr. August Dunning, and everything you'll hear about is something real that happened on Mars this week. By the way, those bright loops standing tall over by the eastern limb herald the entrance of two new sunspot groups, one of them visible already. It's daybreak in the United States and we'll begin by coming to spaceweathernews.com and finding the last day on our star quite calm, but for a small CME bottom left, we'll miss Earth. Big plasma filament stayed firm for now, eyes on him still today. The solar flaring is in cardiac arrest. Flatlined X-ray activity expected to end soon, however, as those new sunspots are about to come in. You can see one of them just at the limb there. Solar wind. We expected an impact and disruption, but this almost seems too small to have been it. The intensity is about right, but it was so short-lived it barely produced global magnetic instability and only low-level storms could be found on a regional basis. Eyes open for more today. The departing positive coronal hole delivered that stream. Incoming red negative already visible in 211 angstroms over on the left side as our big guy turns away. Between coronal holes right now, so no big quakes. Only some minor volcanic activity making for two mountains on alert in Sumatra. Super cool image coming out of NASA's Earth Observatory here. As the Caspian Sea breaks up and melts, we can see the scar marks that ice left on the bottom as it shifted and formed. Amazing. Weather Channel also put out their May temperature forecast and the one for the entire summer. That's over at weather.com. Folks, today is Saturday, so our Fly on the Wall podcast will post in a few hours to suspiciousobservers.org. We're talking Solar Killshot and the Universal Waveguide. Membership is only $4 per month, and there's hundreds of hours on there already. Don't forget to stick around. Dr. Dunning's Mars Weather Recap is coming up next. We've got the pressure and radar forecast, including a rapidly intensifying cyclone Amos north of New Zealand. Also got your current global conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 4.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Hello observers, it's time for the Mars Weekly Weather Review. Let's look at the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter weather recording assembled by the Mars Color Imager for the past week. Last week on Mars, dust storm activities increased over the southern hemisphere, possibly due to increased coronal hole streams leaving the sun several days previous. Sirius, Solus, and Aeonia experienced repeated local scale dust storms. A dust cloud generated by lifting in Solus moved northward and reached into Balmarineris where it subsided. Northern Helios, Samira, Noches, and landforms just east of Arcea also experienced transient dust storms. As usual, high ice cloud streams condensed above the Tharsis region volcano. Meanwhile, over equatorial latitudes, 
condensate water ice clouds associated with the now waning Apelian cloud belt were observed. Focusing further north, small dust lifting events occurred near the edge of the perennial north polar cap, and dust haze over Olympia dipped southward over eastern Utopia. Despite the increase in dust storm activity, both rovers, Opportunity at Meridani Planum and Curiosity in Gale Crater, experienced storm-free skies each sol. Most no major solar events were Mars facing. Since Mars has no magnetic field, it's a perfect analog to the crisis facing the Earth over the next 30 years, as detailed in Ben's video on this topic. Solar particles penetrating the atmosphere, reaching the surface. Now back to Ben. 